Welcome to Tremophonic Audio Stories. Tremophonic, The Sounds of Fear, is a collection of original horror stories presented in audio format. Today's story, The Wayne to Midnight, was written as a project of passion and is free to listen to. Please visit tremophonic.com, follow our Tremophonic social media accounts, and share our posts to a wider audience. You can find us on Patreon if you want to support the development of future stories. This is The Wayne to Midnight. DA 88 FM, covering the Kai Lassa Bay broadcast area. This is the Wayne to Midnight. Welcome back to KBBA 88 FM with me, Steve Wayne, for the final leg of the evening on The Wayne to Midnight. As we said before the break, we're still taking your calls this evening. We ask for your questions and queries, and tonight we're talking about full moons. We know that full moons are popular in mythology for their effects on people, but just how much of it is true? Well, the science tells us that high tides are in fact higher on full moons than other times. So maybe stay away from the beach tonight. Coast guards have indeed given us a silver warning level for seriously dangerous waters tonight. And apparently your sleep is likely to be more disrupted on a full moon and it's nothing to do with the light it emits. How strange. It's all thought to be something to do with a gravitational pull. But it's beyond me how that all links up. Breaking news. Before we start taking those questions, we have breaking news. Reports are coming in about a domestic disturbance on Arsene Avenue. Police inform us that they have the situation under control, but will not release the names of those involved. The police have informed us that a weapon was involved. A solid silver candlestick? We'll keep you updated as we hear more. Arsene Avenue is such a sleepy area of the town, after all. So if you've been hearing sirens, now you know why. So, Angela's been in the booth taking your calls. She'll be back in a moment. And her notes are telling me our next question is from Lilith, and she asks, how often do we have full moons? Well, Lilith, the official answer is approximately 29 and a half days. It's not exact, and sometimes we have lunar eclipses where the Earth is blocking the sun from hitting the moon, even though it's due to be a full one. Our next question was emailed in. This comes from Puka. Puka asks... Is Monday named because full moons happen on Mondays? I'm afraid that's a myth, Puka. Even though it is a Monday today, Monday was actually named as a day to celebrate the goddess of the moon, Mona, during Anglo-Saxon times. It has nothing to do with the moon's cycle. We'll be back with you in a couple of minutes after a familiar voice tells you a little bit about our sponsors. Sterling's Antique Emporium is open Wednesday to Sunday, housing the country's largest collection of antique mirrors. The Hall of Mirrors, as they like to call it, is an impressive collection of over 400 antique mirrors, and every one of them is available for purchase. Visit Sterling's on Simmons Street when you're next in town. Aridai's Cash for Metals. Trade in your gold, silver, platinum, palladium, or other metals for cash in hand as soon as your items are appraised. Visit Aridai and his daughter Jumana at their family-run establishment at 47 High Street, Kailasa Bay. The Kerber Ursuline Argenti Medical Research Facility has their annual open day approaching. 
Visit the campus this Saturday and discover more about the pioneering medical science our town is famous for. And speak to the reps about their ever-expanding job opportunities for local graduates. I know I'll be covering the event for KBBA on Saturday, so I hope to see you there. KBBA 88 FM, covering the Kai Lassa Bay broadcast area. This is the Wayne to Midnight. Breaking news. Well, it's unusual to get two breaking reports in so quickly, but important to know. Sylvester's late night convenience store and petrol station is currently closed due to an undefined incident. We understand that some of the commotion surrounded the attempted theft of jewellery from one of the customers. There may have been some injuries to both staff and clientele, and the police have had to close the shop down for the night. Don't worry, the police are informing the families of those involved, but if you needed milk for your morning coffee, you'll have to wait for the supermarket to open in the AM. very apt on our lunar show, that the lunacy the full moon brings is apparent all over the town tonight. Angela will be back shortly to take more of your calls. She left me with a question from one more caller. This was from Tatiana. She asks, waxing and waning, which one's which? The way I like to remember it, Tatiana, wax on, wane off. Waxing is the build up to the full moon, waning is the dying or fading away. But don't get that confused with this Wayne right here. I'm not fading anywhere. Angela? Have we got a visitor this full moon? Or are we under attack from werewolves? Fetch the silver bullets! <laughs> uh, Angela? <laughs> Must have been the wind. Or are spooky things afoot at the KBBA studios? So, while we wait for Angela to come back and take more of your calls, don't worry folks, we can see your calls are waiting. Uh, your emails show me one more question lined up from Milcom. He asks, Has anyone else been seeing the strange silvery lights shining from the mountain tonight? Is that related to the full moon? Do you know what? I think you might be onto something there. The town's name, Kailasa, was actually originally chosen by the founders over 130 years ago, influenced by the then recent colonization of India, and it means Silver Mountain. Angela? Excuse me, folks. I best go check what that was. It's only the two of us in the studio at this time of the evening, and that sounded more than a dropped teapot or silverware. Angela? It's quiet out there now, folks. Not a soul to be seen. I'm sure Angela will be back momentarily, uh, but now it's time to bring you up to date with the Daily Town Affairs. Hey, BBA, the way to midnight. This is your Daily Town News Update. Today was the annual meeting of our town's pharmaceutical giant, Kerber Ursuline Argenti, with the local council representatives. Their current research is focusing on the treatment of the well-known autoimmune disease, lupus, and they have announced that they will actually be expanding their operation, creating around 200 new jobs. The town council is therefore preparing for the predicted population growth that the town 
may experience as a result of bringing in the appropriate skill type, including the company's new Argentinian owners. But we can also celebrate the employment opportunities this brings for our local school graduates. And our very own KBBA is celebrating tonight after being awarded the second place prize for this year's Local Broadcaster of the Year. Ariane Wen from The Breakfast Show dropped off the solid silver statuette earlier. Yes, I was surprised it was real silver too, which is now sitting proudly in the producer's booth with Angela. No, wait. Angela still isn't back. I in any case, Angela was waving it at me with glee earlier and kissing it like some kind of tournament trophy. Breaking news. I am receiving another breaking news item, and this really is a shock. There's been a break-in at Stirling's Emporium. Seemingly just senseless violence, the beloved Hall of Mirrors has been vandalised, and a large number of the mirrors have been smashed. Again, we'll keep you updated as we hear more, but rest assured the police can see no link between the spree of varying crimes we're experiencing this evening. Sorry folks, strange happenings here in the studio. What the... I found our silver statuette outside the door, as if it had been placed there. Not sure if this is Angela's idea of a prank. Sorry folks, with Angela out of the studio, I have to answer the incoming calls from the direct contact line. It's our emergency phone. I'll be back momentarily. Bay Police Department asking me to put an announcement out. They wanted me to say the following. All residents of the Kailasa Bay are asked to stay indoors and importantly stay out of the moonlight. Secondly, if you have any items in your home that contain silver, be it jewellery, cutlery, mirrored glass, whatever, do not touch it. I repeat, do not touch the silver. And that's all they'd tell me. Um, they asked me not to speculate further on the show, but simply deliver these instructions to you. I will, of course, stay on the air to make sure I can relay any further updates to you. It's not often I'm lost for words, folks, but right now I don't know what else to tell you. It's important for everyone's safety that we follow the instructions we've been given, and we'll wait on further updates from the authorities. Our landline phone here in the studio is one of the key emergency lines in town for getting these messages out to you. So keep your radio on while we await further news. One moment, folks. <clears throat> Hello? everyone talking about the moon? What, what would Kerber Ursula know? You're chemists, not astrophysicists. Silver ox... Silver oxide? Is filtering what rays? How is wavelength of light... Radiation? So that's invisible. But... But... Is that kind of like what we hear as white noise? Interference. 
So what's it actually doing to people it affects? Wait, what? They're still human, right? It's not like they're... I don't want to say it, but undead. It could wear off. Yeah, but it could wear off. Surely it's possible. Let me make sure I've got this right. You, you want me to broadcast that? I was told not to speculate, so you'd better be sure about this. Okay, okay. I get it. Okay, I'm back, folks, but I I don't know how to say this. It's it's the silver. The connection between the crimes tonight. There, there's a madness being caused by touching silver objects. So wherever you are tonight, don't touch anything silver. They were right to warn us about that. Don't touch it. It's like it's infected with something. Angela? Angela, what are you- No! Oh. Hi, it's uh, Steve Wayne. I'm I'm still here, folks. But I'm outside the studio. I'm using the uh, the field report equipment. I need to I need to keep broadcasting. I need to at least make a record of what just happened. What you heard was... Well, it's difficult to explain. Angela was in the studio the whole time. But... She... She changed. I, I don't know how... I don't know how to put it. Her face was altered, uh, dare I say, melted or ruptured. It was like she was wearing some kind of prosthetic mask or something, but her eyes... It was as if she knew what she was doing, but wasn't in control. Like she was angry and weeping. At the same time. And then... Then she came at me. I... I'm not proud of what I did. But I had to. I threw her to the floor as if she... You... 
it just kind of broke. Like her bones weren't strong enough to hold her together. She's just there in a heap on the floor. Still alive, but just moaning. She wasn't alone though. A, a few seconds later, there were more people with the same deformities. Stumbling through the hall. I hit the alarm, grabbed the field report bag, and legged it out the fire exit. I heard them banging on the door behind me. So now, I'm outside. I know I shouldn't be, but I had to. Those of you that know the studio will realize I'm not really near anywhere. I could have gone round the building to my car, but there was more commotion out the front. Struggling and screaming. The Kerber Ursuline facility is just up the road from us, so I assume that's where they came from. But I didn't dare stick around to find out more. Currently on the coastal path at the top of the cliffs, heading towards town. I don't want you to inundate the Bay Police with calls, but I have to ask, can someone please let the police know where I am? The radio station isn't safe to go back to, and I'm out here alone. And I'm in the moonlight with people that look like... I spoke to the scientists at Kerber Ursuline earlier. They called it an infection. Something viral. Something about radiation from the light of the moon. Uh, it reflects and interacts with silver, oxidizing it and, well, that's where my understanding ends. If it gets into your bloodstream, you... Well, you heard how I described them. What concerns me is that this is the route that passes Sylvester's petrol station, and then follows Arsene Avenue into town. And it was suggested that the incidents there were related to the silver poisoning. I'm going to stop here for a bit and catch my breath. I've got no ability to put anything else on the air from this equipment, so you're here with me for now. I can see the whole town from up here. Just the other side of the forest. I'm still at least two miles away from shelter, though. So I'll have to take shelter under the trees and cut through that way. Staying on this coastal path is way too exposed. The only thing I can't guarantee is the broadcast quality of this equipment from the forest. It's relaying off satellites, so it tends to need a direct line of sight. So if I lose contact, tell the police I entered the forest over... Uh, the style that's above, I think it's the Petula Cliffs. Wait, that... That's the siren from town. Is that to make sure people stay inside? Oh no. They can't be. Folks, get inside and stay inside. If you have a basement, get down there now. There's three jets flying in from along the coast. I seriously hope I'm wrong about what I'm about to witness. Stay inside. The best case I can hope for right now. 
is they're going to release some sort of antitoxin or antivirus over the areas. The worst case scenario, I don't even want to say. They're approaching the town now. Wait, they're turning out to sea. Oh, oh no. I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm so sorry. Thank you for listening to The Wayne to Midnight, presented by Tremophonic. The Wayne to Midnight was written, performed, recorded, and edited by Richard Wilson, with music samples and foley effects from Feslian Studios. Don't forget to keep an eye on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Tremophonic.com for our upcoming stories. As a self-funded project, we would appreciate any support you might be willing to give us on Patreon. Thank you for listening.